like it. Why is it? Why was it impossible? Why is it impossible to produce something like the Quran? We know now why because you we have studied the the criteria by observing the, the reasons why the Quran is unlike any of the literature. Right. Hmm? Well, you, you can't always replicate verses or chapters like it because you, you just can't make the same book. It's always it's always going to be different. It's not replicating it, bringing something like it. A similar. I, I think the there I think the printed books are uh, more poetic and more elo eloquent than the Quran. Okay. Since when the challenge was or the falsification test was to bring something more eloquent and more poetic? You see, it's the misunderstanding again of what the falsification test is about. Right. One thing that people fail to realize, they that, that's why is they study this superficially, not you or saying majority of the people and they think that's why oh it's just like a book and uh, I can give you a better book like this and there you go nice poetry I and can so test that anyway I can test that you can find a book that's more elegant and more poetic than a book out anyway but, but you have to but it is never never part of being poetic or eloquent right because the Quran is not poetry yeah. Yeah. it's not even prose if you look at it the Arabs had poetry they had 16 types of poetry they call in Bihar al Madi, Rajas, Tawil there are 16 of them. The Quran is none of them. It's not even prose, it's not even poetry. So it's not like, for example, this oh, is this um, just your ordinary speech. Yeah. It's not like this. So, what is the form of the Quran? People think that Quran is in one form. So, we now can categorize this Quran. We call the, the genre of the Quran, the Quranic genre. It's a unique form of stylistics okay. presented within the Quran and we know why this Quran is unimitable because a lot of scholars have come through and explained it yeah. and um, if you were to study some of these books and you realize why it is impossible for someone to match it because it came in a language where they cannot replicate it because yeah. it's and beyond it, their capacity. It, it, it came in a circumstance where nobody can replicate it either. Hmm? It came in a circumstance where nobody can replicate it either. Actually, the other way around. Um, <laughs> it is made up of letters of the same Arabic language and yet it constructed those letters in certain way it formulated words and phrases give you this meaning and the structure which they are not able to replicate that is what the Quran is saying if you're able to replicate this way not replicate match it like yeah. this then you know it's not from God so why is it then what's stopping you from people uh, imitating it? People don't want to. Hmm? People don't want to. No, it's not the case. They tried and People have been trying. People have tried even a few years ago. I mean, if you look at the internet, a surah like it, there's lots of websites like this. But when you analyze it, and you can clearly see, okay, this is where it falls, this is where it falls, this is where it falls. Because it's not like the Quran. It's unlike the Quran. So you have to match it. The reason why they fell is because they cannot bring of the same linguistic construct the Quran for. Let me give you an example. We read Surat Al-Fatiha. I'm gonna just give you one or two verses from yeah, it. Yeah. Every single day, at least 17 times a day, Muslims pray this, right? In their prayers. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. The Arabs knew what the word hamd means, praising. They knew that Alham means all praise, make it definitive. They know what Rabb means. They know what Alam means. Then somehow guess what Alameen meant, but they had nothing to do with the word Alameen in their uh, vocabulary and the dictionary. So what happened there? They knew that the universe is Alam, world. They had no construct in their vocabulary about Alameen, plural form of Alam. Simply didn't exist. When the Quran brought something like this, so it introduced a new form of the language. Arabic was a growth was uh, in its infancy and the, the Quran was the first book in Arabic. Um, Arabic wasn't in infancy, there is they are constructing uh, poetries, you know, and they had poetry competitions in the market of Hukas and others. So it wasn't in infancy. Yeah, they are masters in their language. So it's very yeah, difficult. Sure. It's maybe they didn't have a book for. Yeah, yeah. Book, it's yeah. mainly oral recitation. Or, and they will memorize thousands of verses in their memory. They would memorize yeah. the lineage of their horses, you know, how many generations, who knows, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it exists, literature existed in an oral form. In an oral form. Yeah. Oral form. So the Quran is also an oral book. But so it, it, it's recited. 
So when the Quran was presented to them in this oral form, they were still una unable to. Why? The example I gave you of the uh, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen ayah, Alham, the Arabs never used the word Hamd with the definitive article in the beginning of their poetry or their prose. Right. Uh, it was in the middle, but never in the beginning. So now they have, you know, engaging with a text where it is not given speaking in the normal convention of everyday language in your prose and poetry. It is introducing things which are like, it makes sense, all praise, it makes sense, I mean there's more than one world, but the construct the construction of it is something totally unique to them. And this is just one ayah of one chapter. In fact, studies have done to be shown that a chapter contains more of those features than the number of the words within the chapter. That's how much the frequency is. So when the Quran says bring a book like unto it, it's too much um, for someone to even attempt. Ten chapters, one chapter, that's even a challenge. And that's why the challenge even being out there, they are able to do that because it's very difficult. You have to speak gibberish to bring something like the unique structure. But the Quran, when it came, it was never understood to be gibberish or accused to be gibberish. It was considered to be the most eloquent. Even their most eloquent poet said, you know, this is not the speech of a human. This is how they were reacting to it. Such eloquence. So, you know, I take back that it's not about eloquence, but the eloquence is there, the highest level of eloquence. So this was the, one of the falsification tests of the Quran. And so, you know, you know, the main um, argument the Quran presents, if you think it's not from God, produce something like it. If you cannot do it, then seek helpers besides Allah. If you are truthful in your claim, but the Quran says, We'll never be able to do it. And if you can't even do that, yeah. five contradictions in it. Yeah. So there are various other falsification tests which the Quran presents so that one can be confident. I mean, in more like a scientific. So give us one example where the Quranic descriptions of the reality in, in terms of science is, is, is totally um, against the fact of reality that we know today. Uh, Surah 18 verse 86. Surah? 18 verse 86. 86. Okay, tell us. No, no, no. 1886. Tell us a bit more about it. And I want to know how this goes against reality. Goes to one point in the year. Yeah. It's sun setting to pull up. And it talks about him. The rest of all between people, the Magog and Magog, and the on that cliff. You can say that it certainly doesn't send to a pool of mud. And we actually know where that story comes from. It's a, if, 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 there's a book in the. Uh, they published not long ago. It talks, uh, talks, it talks about myths about Alexander the Great. And this Gog and Magog narrative and building a wall uh, between people of Gog and Magog in the world existed before Islam. But the, the difference is... is We've come back to the sort of things we were talking about earlier though, yeah. saying that a culture has adopted a tale from another culture. Yeah. yeah. The question is, where is the scientific mistake in describing the reality? You said the sun doesn't set in there. It's from the same source. So says, oh, hey Siri, what time is sunrise tomorrow? Siri is saying sun rises tomorrow at 18. So that's unscientific. No. Unscientific, so, isn't it? Sunset. Okay. Um, you can get sunset like this, sunrise and sunset, even in your newspapers, no, no. right? The, sun, no, no. the verse says the sun sets into mud. Wait. Sunrise and sunset, right? In your newspapers, in your TV, they won't tell you the sun rises at what time, sun sets at what time. Sun doesn't rise, sun doesn't set. But we use it in everyday language. Why? To a reference point. Now, when the Quran describes Dhul-Karanayn's journey, did the Quran say the sun rises? It says no. Wajada, he found the sun rising, the sun setting. So this is a description of what? Someone's perception of the sun rising and sun setting. If you went to a place well, near it, the oceans. If he used the word Wajid that he found, did he find it to his perspective? That's what Let's he understand that. Let's understand that. But and he traveled. The, and Wajid there, no, he says very clearly. It says it rose on the people thereabouts, which they had no protection from the sun. Let's, let's understand this. When you go to a place like uh, a sea, yeah. and you see the sun, the sun setting. Yeah, I get your argument. 
But then it's, it says again, it yeah. rose from the from the area onto a people it had no protection from it, implying those people were very close to the sun. No. Well, there isn't one tafsir that says otherwise. If you have a problem with tafsir, I can have a problem with tafsir too. But we're not discussing tafsir; we're discussing the Quranic text. There, there's another hadith as well. It, it's, Quranic it's not Sahih, but it, I think it's Hassan. I think it's the correct hadith. It talks about. Uh, I don't know whose narration it was, but they said they were with Muhammad and they were riding the donkey. Well, the person asked him, where does the sun rise? Or whatever, I forgot to say He said, for sure it sets in a mirror spring. Yeah, that, that really goes against the Quranic text. Because the Quranic text simply says, Zul Qarnayn found the sun setting. At the time of sunset, he found the sun setting. And the people meet. We see that every day. You know, you know, I can take you um, to a beach and I can show you the sun setting. So even though it doesn't really set, but in our perception, the sun can set. So here, it is not a description of the real how the sun rises and sunset. Allah is simply describing an individual's perception of what he saw as he arrived to the place at the time of sunset. I don't see, I mean, um, personally, I, I'm not convinced at all that this is a scientific mistake. In fact, you know, I, I, I find it rather, it's, you know, I... I right, uh, so take another one, Surah, Surah 2, verse 29. 2, 29. Okay. Christ the year, hmm? Christ the year, hmm? he says, he then, it was about Christ the year, and then he rose up to make five minutes, seven ever. The must have learned some of the great Created the earth. And then rose up to make the sky, the heaven. So you're implying that the stars... The fashion, not to make... Fashion, yeah. Okay, let's, four, let's, four. Let's, it, it, it was like in Surah 40 when it says it was out of form, it was okay. like smoke. Let's let's read that together and see. Because... Yeah. Um, but after, the, after that one, I've got to go, yeah? yeah sure. We'll leave it to that, yeah? yeah, yeah. Because you've been trying to... So it's so an issue with the verse in, in the Furqan, when he says it arose and it was chronic, like a Dukhan. Chronic, chronic Let's go to the both of them, of one by one. Yeah. Yeah. Inshallah. So Surah 2, Ayah? 29. 29. Okay. هو الذي خلق لكم ما في الأرض جميعا ثم استوى إلى السماء فسواهم نسبع سماوات فسواهم نسبع سماوات وهو بكل شيء عليم. Okay. So it is he it is who has created you for all that is on the earth and has applied his design to the heavens, fashioned them into seven heavens, and he alone. He rose yeah, but it says yeah, the Sama is there, the heavens are already there. Let, let, yeah. let's, let's understand your objections first, right? Sorry. And you can answer both. No, no, please do. That's fine. So, Allah has created everything, everything that on the earth is created for you. Then he goes to the sky and then he made them into seven heavens. Yeah. Okay. Seven heavens. Okay. What are the objections? <laughs> I'd like to know. Uh, we know that the earth was... Uh, <laughs> we know the, the, chrono, the chrono, chronological order. Everything in the heavens came first and the earth. Everything in the heavens came first. first. Well, the stars and the galaxies came first and the earth. Um, the better illustration is uh, Surah 41. No, no, let's deal with this one. In here, yeah. when is the heaven created? Then, hmm? then he wrote. Uh, no, no, when is the heaven created? He talks about, he didn't talk about the creation of earth. Yeah. He doesn't talk about this. He says, whatever is on the earth, Allah has created for us. He doesn't say Allah created the earth. This is not about creation of the earth, right? Some people may interpret it this way. Whatever on the earth Allah has created, then he rose from the heavens and made them into seven heavens. So when was the sky created, Sama created, in this verse, in this ayah, verses of one word two. He doesn't talk about when the Sama is created. It simply says, the Sama is made into seven heavens after, or moreover, right? Let's say it's after, it's still not, it's not an issue, because he doesn't talk about the creation of the heavens. It says the heavens are now made into seven. So one heaven, we were on form, right. fashioned into seven heavens. Okay. So I don't see any scientific mistake with the current science that we know of today in this eye. And so the other eye. Uh, Let's go back to the other eye. Yeah? Uh, 41. 10 to 15. They're, they're similar, they're related. Yeah. So, would you indeed deny him who has created the earth in two days? 
And he set up partners with it. The one who's the sustainer of the world. He made this anchoring mountain above its surface. Min and blessed it. And then he, why am I not even reading the English? It's there. For he, it is who, after creating the earth, placed firm mountains on it, towering above its surface, and bestowed so many blessings on it, and equitably apportioned its means of subsistence to all who would seek it, and all that is created in four eons. Then, and he, it is who, applied his design to the skies, which were yet but smoke, and it is who said to them and to the earth, Come into being. Both of you willingly and willingly. To which the both responded, We do come in obedience. Then it says then. It's just that with Let's go let's go to um which one? Shafir, Moxi, Yusuf, Picto. I only had Asad there. Picto? It's okay. Then he came to the heaven when it was. Right. So when was the heaven created according to this ayah? After the two days of the day. It was already Dukhan. It's already in existence. Look. ثم استوى إلى السماء وهي دخان. Then he turned to the heavens when it was smoke. He was already there as a smoke, right? But it was heavens. It was not nothing. So when was the heavens created? It was in the heavens like the stars. We are discussing about the creations of the heavens and the earth. When was the heavens created according to this? It was already there in a form. In a form. It is described as dukhan. So what's what's I want to know what's the <laughs> concern or a scientific um it's obviously saying that they have a fashion hmm? after the year. This the skies from that form Dukhan, it was then made what? The earth and the heavens they were both called to come come together they both come together really okay. so when it was both coming together it seems like the heavens was in form one form and the earth was in this form okay so your contention is the heavens was already what, what is dukhan are you saying dukhan is simply a form that uh, scientifically it's not correct. I, I don't understand what you're saying. Because we have a place here, God is saying, Allah is saying, the earth, he created in specific time periods, say two days, in whatever uh, span of this day is, 24 hours or eons, okay? It's not a matter in this case, in this very minute. Then four days equal, two days, another two days, God, he, he fashioned the, the earth. When he turned to these skies, it was already in a form. Dukhan is what kind of a smoke, but not smoke with... Uh, because when you have a heated thing, okay? so it's, it's, it's a lot of um, temperature there, it's yeah. not, not just um, what you call the burning of ash and so on. Yeah, yeah. Right. So it wasn't formless, it was a form. And they were both coming together. But when you say thumma, Summa also means moreover. If it meant fa, then you'd have a point. So you can argue in both ways. I don't still see a problem. I mean, this is what, what, what when I read this, I don't see a scientific problem in, in, in the ayah with the kind of understanding of science. You're saying that also, the ayah doesn't it say faqala laha, so it mentions that it's he, that he said to the to the heavens, yeah. and then the earth, faqala laha walil earth. Yeah. Faqala laha walil earth. So if we go in from the sequence, then it would suggest anyway that the heavens were created before the earth, which is what your contention is. The heavens were already there. Yes, sir. According to this ayah, when it says, okay, um, the way it's and it was so like the, it was already there. Right. Yeah. I'm sorry, I got, I got, I got because you have to go. Um, if yeah. you come along another time to speak a okay. scholar, we can discuss this. What's your name, bro? Marco. Marco, yeah? yeah? I think I, I remember you now. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Right, see you. Nice talking to you. Take care. See you. Yeah? <laughs>